Hey there, and welcome to The Pseudo Show, brought to you by the Destination Linux Network. Today we bring back Felipe from CrowdSec to discuss the new release and changes since our last conversation. All that and more on The Pseudo Show. Hey there, and welcome to the Pseudo Show, your home for all things open source. I'm Brandon, and today I'm joined by Felipe from CrowdSec. We first introduced our community to CrowdSec in episode 13. I felt it was time to revisit this topic. Today, I'm joined again with Felipe. Felipe has a background in security and open source and has ran security hosting companies and is currently the founder and CEO of CrowdSec. This episode is brought to you by DigitalOcean. DigitalOcean offers the simplest, most developer-friendly cloud platform. You can get started today with a $100 free credit by going to do.co slash DLN and create your account. DigitalOcean is helping you get your apps to market faster with their app platform. Here you can build, deploy, and scale your apps quickly by using their simple, fully managed solution. The app platform starts at just $5 a month and has support for Node.js, Python, PHP, Ruby, and many, many more. Get started today by going to do.co slash dln to get your $100 free credit. This promo is good for two months and will let you play with all kinds of ready-to-play apps from the DigitalOcean marketplace. That's do.co slash dln. And thank you to DigitalOcean for sponsoring this episode of The Pseudo Show. Today's episode is brought to you by Bitwarden. Bitwarden is the easiest and safest way for individuals, teams, and business organizations to store, share, and sync sensitive data. You can go to bitwarden.com slash DLN to check out this amazing open source password manager. Bitwarden works across your devices from mobile, desktop, browser plugins, and even the command line. We're all big fans of Bitwarden. One of those reasons is trust. So how does Bitwarden prove they can be trusted. Not only is Bitwarden open source, they have their code regularly audited by security experts. If you want to make the smart move like many awesome people in the community, then check out bitwarden.com slash DLN and get started for free. If you're like me, though, you'll want to show your appreciation by signing up for the premium edition, especially when the premium edition only starts at $10 per year. That's right, $10 per year. Thank you to Bitwarden for being a sponsor of the Pseudo Show and the entire Destination Linux network. Felipe, thank, thanks for coming back on the podcast. I really appreciate your time today. Always a pleasure, Brendan. Yeah. So just uh, for our listeners that didn't catch our first conversation, I think it's almost been two years now, uh, <clears throat> or they just don't recall, can you just high level, like who you are and what CrowdSec does. Sure. I'm Philip. I'm the CEO of CrowdSec. And what we do basically is some sort of ways of firewalls. So it's a bit, uh, it's, it's a limited explanation, but it also highlights what we do. Like we source, we crowdsource uh, the nefarious IP over the internet uh, with a large community that is to date probably like ten, it's tens of thousands of machine uh, above 40,000. I don't know exactly how much uh, to date. It's growing fast. It's growing like uh, more than half a percent a day. And uh, this community is protecting itself with an IPDS, Intrigen Detection and Prevention uh, System. So this is the free software we are editing. It's open source. And uh, once an IP has been detected as malicious, it's shared across the community so that uh, everyone can further protect itself uh, himself with, uh, with the spottings of the others. So since our last conversation, CrowdSec, for at least from a community perspective, has gotten a lot of notice. Uh, 4,000 stars on GitHub. Uh, I think it's over that now. Uh, and how has that community notice and contributions helped the project? Well, uh, you're right. I mean, the, we really, less, ever since the last conversation, the, the community roughly doubled every uh, uh, quarter. And uh, what happens is we see more and more IPs flowing by the day. And the, the poster child of that would be probably the log4j uh, vulnerability. 
at the time of the recording, it's one week old roughly. And uh, we, the, the community instantly adopted the scenario to block this lock 4G uh, attacks or to detect them. And uh, we got something like 1.67 uh, IPs uh, reported in just 24 hours. So you, we could tell like right away who was trying to exploit. And even though you would not run directly uh, the scenarios or whatever, you can still benefit from this knowledge or protect yourself using this knowledge. So the community effect and moreover, the network effect uh, is kicking in. And it's really what we are after. And it's really what the community is bringing at the table. Yeah, that turnaround seemed pretty quick on that uh, scenario, uh, that or the log four J configuration. Uh, how like, how fast did uh, was that turned around? Like, I think it was pretty quick. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we released it around uh, Saturday or Friday evening, Saturday, and uh, as of Sunday, we already had mass adoption of the scenario. Uh, people willing to help, most of them, because a lot of the current users are not really directly using log four J. Funny enough. They more or less did it to help uh, the others, actually, which is very benevolent at attitude, which we were somehow expecting from this kind of community, but which proved uh, uh, truthful uh, to its uh, vote somehow uh, by, you know, benevolently uh, uh, using this scenario to catch the bad guys and, and, and enhance the detection capabilities uh, of the global network. So, yeah, we speak hours here. And also there's another uh, very good indicator for us is uh, how up to date people are uh, regarding the version of CrowdSec they're running. And we know that so far to date, something like 70% of the global user uh, base is running the last version of CrowdSec and more than 90% a very up to date one. I mean, they might not have the very last release, but uh, it, it's really up to date. Yeah, the, right now that, that it, the, the log 4J uh, configuration or scenario is. Uh, currently on um, CrowdSec Hub, correct? Yes, absolutely. You can uh, grab it uh, either on uh, one-liner command. Uh, you just have to type it in your shell uh, to CSCLI command. This uh, CLI we're using for our product. Or you can just go online and on the hub, hub.crowdsec.net, cut paste it, and uh, you'll be able to have this scenario right away. This scenario is maintained over time. We, we add more signature into it. Because the community is reporting, oh, you should look for this, you should look for that. Because, you know, it's an ongoing situation. Stuff are happening by the day, by the hour. So we enhance and enrich the scenario according to what we see. You know, I, I, sh I should have uh, asked this before. Uh, I think the I went back and looked at the notes from our last conversation. And I don't think CrowdSec Hub had been launched yet. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I wanted to go back and just say, what is right. CrowdSec Hub? Just so the audience can uh, uh, know what that is. Yeah, sure. So several things happened ever since we talked last time. Uh, the first thing is we released uh, this uh, hub. And the hub is a place where you can find all the scenarios, the balancers, and the balancers are the IPS component, the one that really uh, protect you. Because the software as such is a detector. It detects whatever you give it to detect, right? So you put logs in the input, you put scenarios you're looking for, and you put this uh, IPS, this protection component uh, that will uh, fold the attacks. So on the hub, you find all of those, you know, another form of collections. For example, you can have an Apache collection, which would deal with all the uh, web shenanigans you can find on Apache, and uh, you can uh, now protect yourself with it. So really the hub is where uh, the community is publishing its scenarios. Uh, our team is publishing scenarios as well. And uh, there's a second component we haven't uh, spoken most likely so far. It's the app, what we call the app. We don't know if we could call it console or dashboard or whatever. It's a very cool new component uh, and it's for free as well. You can go online and you can see the activity of your IDS, what it blocked, what, the, what it was uh, queried for, uh, the number of time, what IP or what geo or what IS uh, attacked you, uh, on which scenario, at what time, uh, it's very, very interesting to see in action. And we also released in the same uh, app, web app. It's app.crowdsec.net. You can find um, the uh, detailed CTI over an IP. So you click on an IP and we'll give you all the thing we know about this IP in details, when, what, uh, how many times the community has seen it and so on. So the I believe uh, at the time of this recording, the console is still in public beta. Is that correct? 
Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we are very experienced in terms of uh, software releases, so we have a very, very strong Q&A uh, process. Specifically, when you're working with hosting companies, and it's, it's a bit of, a, of our thing. It's not only hosting companies, but there are a lot of critical uh, companies running it, like banks and stuff. Uh, when you release anything on the market, it has to be rock solid, strong, and, uh, and tested. So we intend to be in beta for a bit longer. And also because we have a lot of feedbacks from the community saying, okay, you should add this or that, or that would be so cool if we could see it under this perspective. You know? So until we have covered, let's say, 90% of the requests, we'll, we'll keep it a beta. Is console uh, uh, open source just like the rest of Kratzak? And can... No, because it's an online product. So there are, ah. you're actually right. There are two things we can highlight. So the hub is not really per se uh, yeah. an open source product because it's a web front. Same for the SaaS product. It's uh, so first of all, it's a SaaS product. This is where okay, we will sense. ultimately make money at some point also. Yeah. Uh, but a lot is for free already, you know, uh, and then that won't change. And the other thing that is often uh, noted as not being uh, open source uh, so far, and it's a point of concern that we discuss with the community, is the consensus. So the consensus is the algorithm that is uh, checking that it's not a false positive or it's not a poisoning attempt. So we receive a signal, say ABCD, say Brandon's IP, right? And uh, someone is telling us, or many people are telling us, okay, Brandon's IP is nefarious, it's dangerous, you should ban it into your consensus. Well, then that's kind of a tribunal where there, everyone has a voice, every entity has a voice, not every IP. And we have a lot of algorithms that are, you know, digging into this to check if it's an accurate fact, not to release a false positive. So what happens is it's, it's a pretty complicated part of uh, the code. And it's also code and infrastructure entangled together, if you see what I mean. So we cannot really split the code from the architecture. Until we cannot do really this, we wouldn't want to publish it as an open source concept. It's not because of how the algorithm are working or whatever, because you know we could release it under a license that prevents any, uh, any um, uh, exploitation in terms of uh, creating a competition, you know, for example. But um, it's, we didn't release it because already it's not uh, open source ready for us. It has to be extremely documented, extremely structured. Uh, it's not yet there. And also it's totally mingled with our infrastructure. So we have to separate those two already. Yeah, and that will yeah. be, yeah, be open source. Yeah, that, that's, that's tough to do. I mean, like I, I've done that before where I'm like, well, this doesn't really, no one's really going to care about this piece because that's only useful to me. Uh, that, of course, that was years ago. And then, like, I've seen other projects as well, like uh, uh, ONAP uh, that became, a, uh, that was originally eComp uh, from at and It was like, there's some stuff here that's unique to at and that wouldn't apply to anyone else. But that's a different story. <laughs> but, yeah, what uh, we want but, is people to be able to partake in the thinking, to say, okay, we are not a kind of a, a ruthless authority trying to ban people and, you know, like uh, some godlike entity, whatever. It's not what we want, to, we want to be. If we want to have like very fair, strong algorithm that even if seen by the bad guys would not be able to get, they would not be able to get around it. So having more brains thinking about it is exactly what we want. And this is the reason why we will open source this code, not because we want people to see that we are good guys, whatever shit. It's because we want their opinion, because it's precious to us, and because more brain thinking on how to fold this problem is better. Yeah, it uh, also would help to have more security eyes on it as well, right? Just mm -hmm. make sure it's... Uh, that there's no blind spots here. Yeah, make sure it's... Yeah, limit the blind spots as much as possible. Uh, since you brought up SaaS, right? Uh, I'm going to uh, ask a couple business questions, if you don't mind. And sure. So I, how has CrowdSec grown as a company? Like, uh, and also, like, if you can, uh, any new customers that you can talk about? Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, how do, first of all, how do we feel ourselves? So we are still pre-revenue, meaning we don't make any meaningful revenue. Uh, we don't intend to make any kind of service around the product directly. This is all for our partners. We have a, a network of partners we're building. They are the ones that are certified, that can train you, that can deploy the product, that can write scenarios for you and, and you know, survey uh, whatever your needs are. Um, so this is already a, a strong first uh, point. Second thing is we are fueled and financed for uh, more uh, more than a year uh, ahead. So we have a runway cash. 
Uh, we will make another fundraiser next year, probably to you know push further uh, the community uh, and growing. The investors are understanding what we're after. This network effect. This is like if you would be saying, okay, guys, make money uh, at Facebook back in 2010. You know, it wouldn't make sense because it was like an embryo of something. We would have totally broken the dynamic. Here, they understand we're after a network effect. It's going to take time. It's extremely powerful. Uh, but once you have a gold mine. There are tons of people ready to lend you some caterpillars, right? There's no problem. You, you, you get the tools to dig into it. So how we will make money is uh, regarding the SaaS uh, thing. So, for example, right now, uh, you can have uh, features around CTI and all of this will be for free and all. But if you want to make uh, queries to the data lake, to this uh, CTI system, but you don't partake into the network, you'll be able to do it, but it will be for against bugs, right? Uh, because say you're not sharing with us signals. Well, you're not reinforcing the system. So it's legitimate that I ask you to pay to access those data that the network has collected. This is how we will fuel ourselves, uh, partly at least. The other thing is we will make features like, am I under attack or am I attacking the others as seen at the network level? Uh, this is precious for a lot of sysadmins on large companies. They want to know, you know, before something happened, before the storm uh, uh, hits them. Uh, and also you'll be able to have a mix match in your IPS component based on researches we are making on the side. Like, for example, we are listing as much as we, as we can uh, proxies, you know, that are used for not so good reasons, for example. So you will be able to integrate those into your, your IPS mix. This will be like kind of premium listing. Um, we are thinking also some uh, specific uh, e-commerce collection, like both scalping, you know, the one that are buying PlayStation 5 and reselling them right away on eBay and stuff like that, or scrapping or harvesting or credit card stuffing. There are very specific business uh, needs that are not, you know, for the broader scope. Uh, and this will be probably a uh, premium features as well. Okay. That's cool. Especially the, uh, on the, on the financial front. I mean, that, that's, uh, trying to catch scalpers or in the credit and credit card that that's big that's a big big thing to go after yeah, um, and you're running a business you know so it's interesting for us to help you in this you have money to defend your business we don't want to make money on the community of people sharing signals and helping us grow mm -hmm. by the day you know we want yeah. to make people money where we really have an added value and we're investing our and time uh to source a very qualified uh, uh information for them Okay. That's great. So I wanted to touch on a couple technical questions, uh, that they're not super deep, but, uh, but for our listeners that may want to use crowd sex specifically in a public cloud environment, I like, I, I was looking at a few of your posts, but like what, how, from your point of view, how is it best accomplished to defend my public cloud properties? Well, if you are running containers, definitely use a container. We have a container version. It's extremely popular. It's actually the, the most popular version, uh, I think, of CrowdSec. Uh, the most popular way of using it is the container. It's not really easy for us to handle because containers go up and down constantly and it, mm -hmm. it offers other challenges for us. But <laughs> honestly, it's, it's extremely handy and useful for the, for the users. So if you want a no-brainer, you know how to run a container, you know, grab the container, kick it, look how it works. It's super easy uh, and, and it's a good way of, of getting started. The other way uh, of doing it is if you have VMs, uh, like uh, EC2 instances and stuff like that, um, you can definitely use the agent, uh, install it on the command line or using a Terraform environment. It's also very efficient, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And you would put it in your DevOps stack, like a de facto component of any Linux you spawn uh, mm -hmm. would be having this uh, uh, CrowdSec agent running. So big cloud makers are looking into this direction, rather, the hyperscalers, and the users are often looking in the direction of the uh, uh, container itself. Got it. Well, uh, on the container front, I, I, I haven't really dug too deep into the containers, I, but I've been using it most using CrowdSec mostly in my home lab. I, mean, I don't really have a use case for it in my day job yet. Um, though I am deploying an application that will likely need something like this. 
how does the container work? Like specifically like in a Kubernetes environment, like, is it a sidecar container or is it something that like, how, how does the CrowdSec implementation work in like a Kubernetes environment? Okay, this is where we are touching the limit of what I know because yeah. I'm absolutely not a container expert. So we have guys doing this at the company and we yeah. have extremely detailed articles on the blog and how to use it extremely precisely. So if I go further into this direction, I'm pretty sure I'm going to say crap and I would gladly <laughs> redirect you to the blog rather than looking stupid. You uh, know? I'm going to put a link to the blog in the show yeah. notes. <laughs> so. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> uh, no problem. Felipe, is there uh, anything on the roadmap that you personally or that any, uh, or that the that CrowdSec is really excited about, and and then also uh, and t- maybe something that you want feedback from the community on specific uh, uh, that something that's on your roadmap. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have a lot of ideas we like to challenge with the community. One that has been brought to us lately, uh, in a, we we had it in our mind rather. It's a BGP uh, community. Yeah, that look weird, uh, but actually having a BGP community that is CrowdSec stamped would allow anyone with routers to directly drop IPs that we deem are bad. So think about it that way. Uh, let's be back on uh, on Friday. Remind a bit the week, and we are back on Friday. This log4j uh, thing happened. We have the IPs. We have them, right? What is the best and fastest way for everyone to protect himself? Well, let's drop it on the border on the BGP routers directly. That would kill right away anyone trying to leverage it. That's a big, big scheme, but that's extremely efficient. So we're thinking into it. As a matter of fact, we're very good, uh, well, we're very decent uh, uh, cybersecurity professionals, but we don't know nothing about BGP, right? It's 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 like big tubes and there are, there are specialists of this. So we're discussing with those guys and uh, they are uh, educating us on how BGP works and how we could do cool stuff together uh, by creating communities that people could subscribe to. I don't know if subscription is even the right word here. Uh, another thing we're looking into is uh, domain names because actually we are dealing, I mean, our unit of count as such is IP address, right? And it's extremely efficient. But domain names are very interesting in the context of um, ransomware, namely, and command and control uh, system. So basically, when the bad guys are coding, they don't directly point to an IP because this IP can be taken down and you would lose control over your botnet. So what they do is they rather use a domain name, actually several of them, uh, which they can redirect to new IP addresses if this uh, domain name or if those IP addresses are ever burnt. So uh, there is an interest for us into digging into this direction as well. You know, having some sort of domain name awareness and not just IP address awareness. And the big, big stuff we're working in uh, on, it's uh, the uh, Windows agent. Uh, yeah, you heard it right. Uh, actually, we definitely plan to port uh, this system on Windows environment. So to put it on a macro scale, Windows is mainly used for desktops, right? It's not really an uh, internet operating system. It's more Linux, obviously. Um, but that being said, there's a huge security problem uh, on, the, on the desktop front, and companies are struggling to deal with this problem. Uh, Go is super easy to carry and port to uh, Windows environments. Uh, the scenarios, obviously, are entirely different. The log sources are entirely different. But we have good hopes to release on Q1 uh, the CrowdSec agent, uh, the very same, but adapted in Windows environment that would detect when you have like a, a crypto routines called uh, in masses, if you have scan being initiated by your machine, if you are deleting a lot of files at once, which doesn't look like your usual habit and stuff. And this will be for free as usual. That's fantastic. I mean, on the Windows front, um, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Especially with that, what you brought up with ransomware, that makes that 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 need that definitely needs to happen uh, on on the desktop. It, it's, uh, it's like I, I don't know. Uh, I have not had a problem with it with my customers, at least not yet. But I do know that a lot of uh, organizations uh, that end up dealing with it, you know, they. They lose. They lo- either lose data or they lose a lot of money 
<laughs> yeah, and it's here to last. I mean, we are structuring an industry here. I mean, on both fronts. I mean, the bad guys, the cyber criminals, are structuring this industry for more than, than two or three years already. Uh, they are very, very efficient, very organized. There are people uh, finding the flows, uh, uh, building the payloads, uh, the ransomware system and stuff like that. But on the other fan, part of the fence, we are doing the very same thing. We have people negotiating ransoms. We have uh, lawyers uh, taking care of that. You can even deduce it from your taxation, right? The colonial pipeline theft. The guy paid the ransom and it's going to be off their taxes. Really? I mean, it's borderline sponsorship somehow. You see what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And there will be there a ton of uh, software editor doing specific solution against ransomware. There, there are too many stakes. There are, there's too much on the table now for this thing to go away. So yeah. I'm thinking, sadly, that ransomware, too many people have interest in it on both cyber criminal front and the good guy front for it to ever disappear, actually. Yeah. So it's here to last, and it was our uh, responsibility to answer the call. Yeah, well, I hope uh, that this helps prevent some of it, but we'll, and, uh, but we'll see where things land. Felipe, is there anything else you want to cover before we wrap up today? No, I think uh, thank you again for inviting me uh, a second time and see where yeah. we stand now. It's been very interesting and I'll be keeping you updated, Brendan, anytime we have something uh, new and hot on Absolutely. fire. Um, there will be big news next year. We will have a fundraiser very likely. So we'd like the community to be shiny uh, by then and show investors that, yes, open source is a big thing. It's the next big thing. And community-driven software for the greater good, are still worth investing into. This is what we're looking for. And for that, you can help us. You can join the ranks. You can develop scenarios. You can adopt the product. You can talk about it to your boss. You can contact us and give give some ideas or some hands on some hours. You can do a lot of things and we'll be delighted to help you in return anytime you need it. Great. Thank you, Felipe. I appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. As always, your feedback is welcome. Head on over to sudo.show slash discuss. If you'd like more of the Pseudo Show, you can find it over at sudo.show and on social media at Pseudo Show Podcast. You can catch more awesome content over at our network partners, destinationlinux.network. You can follow me on social media at dbrandonjohnson or my website, open-tech.net and new content at destinationlinux.network. Remember, the Pseudo Show is your place for all things open source. Until next time.